Uh, Donald is a very good friend of mine. Uh, who, who knows? I may end up supporting him for president. If he's the nominee of the party, I might, might support him even before that. I don't know. Well, what he said about uh, President Bush is absolutely wrong. Uh, and I, I know national intelligence. Several times I've, I've held very, very high national security clearances in the Justice Department. Uh, you'd, have to, you'd have to be looking for a needle in a haystack and putting the three needles together in order to figure out 9-11. Uh, it, it is not President Clinton's fault. It is not President Bush's fault. It's the fault of the guys who did it. There you got Rudy Giuliani appearing on this program in the last half hour. Now we've got Donald Trump who joins us from the campaign trail down in South Carolina. Mr. Trump, good morning to you. Good morning. Uh, what do you make of Rudy Giuliani just on the couch a little while ago saying that regarding your comments and George W. Bush and September the 11th, Rudy doesn't feel you're right about it? Well, I don't care about his comments. The fact is that Jeb Bush, who's a, you know, look, he's doing horribly. It's an embarrassment to the family. He doesn't even want to use his last name. But Jeb Bush said that his brother gave great security. Well, the fact is, all I did, and I heard this over and over again, and he uses his brother. And finally, I had to say, look, excuse me, but the World Trade Center came down during his reign, let's call it, during his reign, the, during his term as president, the World Trade Center came down. And everybody said, oh, we never thought of that. Now everybody's saying, wow, we never thought of that. The fact is, he got a free pass because after the World Trade Center came down, we didn't have an attack. But the World Trade Center was the single biggest attack in the history of our country, bigger than Pearl Harbor, because it was an attack on how civilians. Is, how is he supposed to stop that? How is he supposed to find random people throughout the country nine months into the job that were going to be going, doing something we couldn't even possibly imagine that the CIA didn't anticipate, nor did anyone specifically uh, brief him on. Well, Brian, if you go back and read the documents and read the papers and read the reports, you're going to see that the CIA had information, and so did the NSA, and so did other agencies, and nobody was talking to each other. They all hated each other at the top. There was tremendous disorganization, and had they gotten together, they would have been able to piece it together. Had we had a strong immigration policy, had my immigration policy been intact, and I've been president, because there's nobody stronger on the borders than I am, had my immigration immigration policy been put forward right. and if it was you wouldn't have even had these people in the country yes, and Mr. Mr. Trump um, you know we've heard some pundits say that that yes the the debate on the war in Iraq is not a bad thing to be doing not not bad to have that conversation but is it risky politically for you in South Carolina where the adoration for the Bush know. family is so strong I don't know and, and, and also the the military presence there the big military population I don't know. Well, there's a new call out. I want to get your response to it. What? I don't do things for that. I don't do things. I tell the truth. The war in Iraq was a disaster. The war in Iraq, when you talk about the migration, when you talk about all of the problems that you see today, the war in Iraq started it all. That was the beginning. Unfortunately, it was, you know, I was against the war in Iraq from the beginning. From 2003, I was, and even but, before then, but, I was against the war in Iraq. The war in Iraq was one of the worst decisions when, when ever did the, made in when this was country's Beirut, history. When was Beirut bombed? That was before the war in Iraq. That's right. But we went into the war. And, and who bombed Beirut? Who bombed? Where did that come from? Where did that come from? And where were the weapons of mass destruction, Brian? Well, I, I would say this. Madeleine Albright said they were there. Bill Clinton said they All were right. there. Jacques Chirac <laughs> said they were there. The Portuguese, the, 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 Port the Portuguese prime minister said they were there. Hosni really? Mubarak said they okay. were there. Well, they weren't there. They didn't find them. They found nothing. Who blew up the World Trade Center? It wasn't the Iraqis. It was Saudi. I mean, take a look at Saudi Arabia. Open the documents. We ought to get Bush or somebody to have the documents opened because, frankly, if you open the documents, I think you're going to see that it was Saudi Arabia. It wasn't Iraq. But Saudi Arabia did what? Well, it, the people came, most of the people came from Saudi Arabia. They didn't come from Iraq. The World Trade Center was not, yeah, right, 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 was right. not and, knocked down by sure. Iraqi. And, and, Mr. Trump, when you made your comments about immigration, you know, indeed, there were a number of people in this country illegally who had overstayed their policy or over their visas. Had my policies been put into effect, had I been president, yeah. I would have had it because I have the strongest immigration in policy. Nine months, you would have, in would nine have months, been, you would have swept up every person over staying their visa? Those people would not have been in the country had my policies been intact. Well, I tell you what, there's a brand new CNN poll out uh, this morning, and you are uh, much higher than everybody else. But one of the things that uh, people said, they asked the Republicans who responded, they said that uh, Donald Trump would be the number one person to handle with illegal immigration, 
ISIS, uh, foreign policy, and so, uh, the economy as well. Also, there's a brand new Quinnipiac national poll out. You're at about 40. Uh, Marco Rubio is about 20. Uh, and uh, Ted Cruz is at third right now, all within the margin of error on the second. Uh, your, your observation? Well, I'm happy about it, but, you know, people are looking for security in this country. We have no security. We don't have borders. We're going to build the wall. Believe me, we're going to build the wall. But we don't have borders, and we have people from Syria now coming in. We have no idea who they are. We don't even know where they're placing them. They're putting them in different places. They're putting them in South Carolina, and we have the governors not fighting it, and they're putting them all over the country. And what are we doing? We don't know. They're not vetted. They have no papers, no documentation. We have no idea. Are they ISIS? Maybe they're not, and maybe they are. Uh, our country is being led by a man that yeah. truly is, in my opinion, as a president, he's incompetent. Well, and he has, has similar words to, to say about you, Mr. Trump, despite you doing so well in the polls. Uh, and, and, and having won in New Hampshire and doing well in Iowa, looking good in South Carolina, he says this. He doesn't think the American people are going to vote you into office. I continue to believe Mr. Trump will not be president. And the reason is because I have a lot of faith in the American people. And I think they recognize that being president is a serious job. It's not hosting a talk show or a reality show. It's not promotion. It's not marketing. It's hard. And a lot of people count on us getting it right. And he reminded the American people that the president has nuclear codes and that, that capability. I, Mr. Trump, how do you respond? And it's not being a community organizer, which is what he was. That was about it. Let me tell you, I, I built a great company, one of the great companies, some of the great assets in the world, very little debt, Tremendous cash flow. It's the thinking our country needs. We need a different thinking than guys like we have right now. He's going to go down as one of the worst, perhaps the worst president in the history of the United States. And he certainly would like to see me. And, what, you know, it's interesting. When they make those statements, that means that, in a way, it's a badge of honor because that's the one that they're looking at. Yeah, Hillary, the right. same thing. The last person Hillary wants to run is me. And as you see, I'm beating her in the polls. So, I think we're going to do just fine. We have a tremendous right. number of people that want to see America be great again, well, and that's what we're doing. If you become uh, the nominee and become president, you're going to have to deal with exactly what's going on in the world today, and that's San Bernardino. It's staggering to find out the FBI still cannot open that terrorist's phone because Apple made something that was uh, encryption. Uh, has encryption, and we cannot open it. Apple's been ordered by the courts to do so. They are fighting back, saying we cannot. What would President Donald Trump do about this? I agree 100 percent with the courts. We should, in that case, we should open it up. I think security overall, we have to open it up and we have to use our heads. We have to use common sense. Somebody the other day called me a common sense conservative. We have to use common sense. Our country is got so many problems. Can you imagine that? Here are the people that killed 14 people, other people laying desperately ill in the hospital from what they did. These are two people radicalized who were given a wedding party by the people that they killed. There's something going on. We have to be very careful. We have to be very vigilant. But to think that Apple won't allow us to get into her cell phone, who do they think they are? No, we have to open it up. Well, they, you know, Apple says that if, if they had a workaround or let the government in, that would be good for hackers on everybody's phones. Uh, Apple, this is one case, and this is a case that certainly we should be able to get into the phone, and we should find out what happened, why it happened, and uh, maybe there's other people involved, and we have to do that. All right. Uh, Donald Trump, who's on the stump down in South Carolina, thank you very much for joining us, and good, uh, good luck on Saturday. Thank you very much.